This will be the very first time that I've ever produced mangrove snakes. Hopefully. Hey, good morning everybody. Sometimes I think the worst part of my day is actually the trip over to the shop. But hey, if that's the worst thing that I can complain about, I'm doing pretty good because look at guys, I am surrounded by awesome snakes and reptiles. As a matter of fact, I think I have a ball right here. Yep, it's that Guiana Redtail Boa, and look at how amazing they are doing. I tell you what, I absolutely love the fact that every time I look at these guys, they get brighter. I mean, look at that tail. That is absolutely adorable. Regardless, I did a little time travel there for you guys, but the fact is, is that I filmed a clip on Chicken Strip yesterday that didn't get in the vlog. You guys are always asking me for an update, so why don't we go ahead and time travel to yesterday's clip. I certainly don't highlight Chicken Strip nearly enough, and now that he's getting a little bit bigger, he doesn't look quite as much like a chicken strip so maybe at some point we'll have to change his name let me know in the comments what you think if we should change chicken strip or if it's just going to be cute and even when he's five or six foot we'll still call him chicken strip i don't know what you think about it but of course he's an albino nile monitor and the interesting thing is when i bought chicken strip as a teeny tiny baby i really didn't know if i was going to keep him and uh truth be told i kind of told Lori i was going to just buy it keep it for a little while to have some fun and ultimately find a new home for it because i didn't know if i wanted an albino nile monitor or not. I really wanted an albino water monitor to be truthful, but the fact is these guys are much more rare than albino water monitors, but Nile monitors you definitely have to work with a little bit more because these guys can get a little cantankerous and they definitely are a little bit crazy. But as you can see, Chicken Strip is super calm and we've been working with him for a long time. He's an amazing animal and now I just can't imagine getting rid of him. I think he's going to be a great display animal next door and again I keep saying next door I want to have those kind of ambassador animals that people like oh my god there's only a few of those in the world and I get to see one like the two-headed animals or the albino monitor or things like that so I think he's gonna be pretty cool and we'll get him in a really nice display the only problem is these guys hide a little bit so hopefully during the day when people come to see him he's not gonna be hiding all day but for those of you people that have been opining for a little chicken strip there you have it okay back to the present and a lot of people have been opining for Western hognose snakes I cannot tell you how many comments over the last few days people are like show some Western hognose snakes so let's go ahead ahead and learn a little bit about the western hognose snakes. Of course, they are an absolutely amazing colubrid that is so cute. I mean, look at that little pug nose. Of course, that is why they call them hognose. And that little uptorn snout is actually really helpful when it comes to burrowing. They'll actually use that to kind of excavate their way into burrows, which is really amazing. And these guys have what they call Batesian mimicry, which is basically when a non-harmless animal mimics a dangerous animal, such like a rattlesnake. So basically, to the untrained eye when they look at a hognose snake, the first thing they're going to say is, oh my god, that must be a rattlesnake. Now, interestingly enough, these guys will make a little bit of a hiss that almost sounds like a rattle as well, and that is basically their defense mechanism, right? When someone walks up on them, people look and say, oh my god, it kind of looks like a rattlesnake. They hear the little shh, and then all of a sudden they think, oh my god, stay away from them. So they're actually a really cool adaptation to the animal. Now, when it comes to are they dangerous or not, they're really still considered non-venomous snakes, but they do have kind of an advanced saliva situation where sometimes some people can have an allergic reaction that can cause anywhere from like swelling to itching to sometimes a little bit of nausea but honestly the vast majority of people including myself oh what's up little buddy don't have any effects from the saliva whatsoever I've been bitten hundreds of times by hognose and never had any effect but we have had one or two employees that have had just a little bit of swelling nothing major when actually even though you still need to be somewhat careful I don't think that there's ever a harmful bite from a hognose snake, if that makes any sense. Regardless, though, this is basically an adult female. They can get a little bit bigger, but interestingly enough, males stay much smaller. Like, this is actually a two-and-a-half-year-old male azanthic hognose, and that's the thing that's really cool about hognose, is that they're really polygenic as well, much like corn snakes and leopard geckos and ball pythons. There's a whole bunch of different color phases or paint jobs that you can choose from. So if you want something that's like a silvery color like this right here, you can get an azanthic. There's a bunch of albino stuff and toffee stuff and all kinds of great animals and I absolutely love them all. And there's even pattern mutations like the anaconda hognose which basically has a little bit more of a dotting kind of like a green anaconda. That's why they're called anacondas. And when you breed these together because they're co-dominant you can get a superconda which is basically a patternless hognose snake. So it's really a really amazing snake. Super placid, super nice. I mean I think that their personality is incredible and I've often said that if you get one hognose snake you're probably going to get more because you'll fall in love with 
how amazing they are. So there you guys go. You wanted a little bit of hog nose time? You got it and I hope that you enjoyed it. Guys, I am so excited. Look at how gravid this mangrove snake is. This will be the very first time that I've ever produced mangrove snakes. Hopefully she's gonna have a good clutch of eggs and hopefully a few others will too. And hey, these guys have a mild venom so I don't wanna get bit and I certainly don't wanna get bit in the face. So I have to be a little bit careful on what this girl is doing. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna go ahead and put her down because again, she's grabbing and I don't wanna mess her up at all. But what a beautiful snake, huh? So I think the best thing to do is handle a snake more like my black tail Kribos that can be a little bit crazy, but they're not fighters and they certainly don't have any venom in them. Regardless, I was gonna tell you guys, I had a hard time sleeping last night because I was so excited about all those meetings we had, not only about the zoo next door, but some other projects I'm working on. There'll be more news about that pretty soon. If you didn't watch yesterday's vlog, go ahead and check out the link in the description because it was absolutely awesome and there is going to be some amazing things going on next door. Every time we kind of take the next step, it gets more exciting. I am promise you guys by midsummer or so, you guys will be able to come and visit me if you want to and it's going to be an adventure. I love the fact that we're not just doing like awesome naturalistic enclosures, but the entire environment, as soon as you walk in the door, it's going to feel like you're walking into kind of a Disney theme exhibit or something. So it's going to be absolutely incredible. Regardless, I am going to get out of here really quick. And Lori and myself are going to head over to my buddies Ben and Lorenzo's place. Remember, they're out of town and we are kind of baby snake sitting or whatever you end up calling it. Lori actually hasn't been over there to help me and they're coming back into town in a day or two. So I just want to go over there and make sure everything is looking good. So when they get home, they're happy with my snake sitting abilities. So my friends are going to be back here in the next day and a half or so. So I just thought I'd bring Lori over. She can help me out just going through one last time, making sure everything has fresh water and looks in good shape. But remember when we used to work with these guys? Aren't they cool? Oh yeah, I always liked them. I know, that's They're so They're very cool. neat animals. I know, I wish we still worked with them. We worked with them probably, I don't know, like 10 or 12 years ago. And we produced them a couple times, but these are called cave dwelling rat snakes or a Ridley eye. They're a type of beauty snake. But look at how amazing that is. Isn't this place cool? Or you've been here once before, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's awesome. This is another snake that we worked with a long time ago. Remember these guys? I do. Oh my God, black pine snakes. It's been like, I bet you it's been probably close to 20 years since we've actually had these guys. And they get pretty big. What, you don't like them? No, they were never my favorites. <laughs> Why? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, these and bull snakes, honestly, they're big. They could be kind of messy, and we had a couple mean ones, so that kind of turned me off. This one seems okay. <laughs> yeah, this one's actually really cool. They get a little hissy, and they can sometimes get a little strikey, but uh, I think they're absolutely cool. And again, they're a really big snake. I mean, these guys can literally get, you know, seven, eight foot long at some times, but uh, really a cool animal. Now they're on a list that makes it really difficult to get them because you need permits to get across state lines and all that other stuff, so you definitely don't see very many of these guys. The good news is, is that you can buy them interstate, so if Ben ever produces black pines, I can get them legally because they're not crossing state lines. Isn't that good news? Oh, that's great news. <laughs> I definitely want to get some of these for the zoo. Literally this morning, I was kind of sketching out some cages for these guys. Isn't this thing cool, little Euromastics? They're tame. <laughs> oh, they're super tame. That's why I've I seen like them, them, but I've never actually interacted with them. That's why I love them. I mean, look at that cute little derpy face. And, I mean, they're just <laughs> they, so cute. They do have little cool heads. I know, aren't they awesome? And they make a really great, like, desert type of terrarium. You know, I think that's going to be really cool. You can see Ben and Lorenzo's here, just how cool that looks. If you did, like, really natural rocks and all this stuff. I mean, it's gonna be really cool. So I think this is one of the desert environments I definitely wanna do, so I think it's really cool. I just love that little guy. How old is he? This one's only about a year old, so. Oh, okay, yeah, so, so a year, it's still pretty small. And there are some species of Euromastics that are really big, like the Egypticus, uh, but they're not as colorful. So I kinda like some of the other species that stay a little smaller, but have beautiful color like this guy. And then of course, the last time I was here, I showed you guys the little baby emeralds, but you haven't seen them, have you? No, I have not. Oh. Oh, a shed. Isn't that cute? Yeah, look at that pretty head. I know, so beautiful. Most of them are born red, but there was two of them that were born green, oh. which is a little bit more unusual, but those are, those are the parents up there. And then here's one of the little red babies. I mean, isn't that cool? It's starting to get a little bit of green in it, but it's still awesome. Yeah, I wouldn't call it red. It looks more orange, right? Yeah, when it was born, it was probably really red, and now it's just starting to turn green, so it looks a little bit kind of spotty right now. Don't they have an awesome collection, though? 
yeah it is a very nice little eclectic collection i know that's what i love yeah. about it is there's just a lot of variety and stuff like that it's good to go everything looks good so i'm glad that they're going to be back and i'm glad that everything seemed to go pretty well as for now i bought lori an attachment to her KitchenAid uh, to make ice cream a few months back and we've never made ice cream so we're off to home to go make some mascarpone ice cream and maybe some other stuff too mascarpone ice cream <laughs> So basically, we have our KitchenAid and we have our KitchenAid ice cream maker. Again, never done this before, never made ice cream ever in my life. Lori's never made ice cream in her life, uh, but we're gonna go ahead and give it a shot and hopefully this turns out okay. Let's see what happens. <laughs> okay, so we ran into our first little, you're supposed to store this in the freezer for 15 hours before we make ice cream. That should I be wondered, on the outside of the box. I wondered how a non-frozen thing would make ice cream. Well, no, because you can do it with like uh, rock salt and something to, and I thought maybe that was what happened. <laughs> that okay. 15 hours. <laughs> All right, guys, so you will not see any ice cream making in today's vlog, maybe in a future vlog, because this has to go in the freezer for 15 hours before we can make ice cream. Lori went to the store, we bought all kinds of stuff. All right. uh, we're going to Dairy Queen now. Okay, we're off to... Uh, to <laughs> okay guys, well that's just the way it goes sometimes. We'll have to see what else comes down, but no ice cream today. Well, since that was a complete bust and we're definitely not making ice cream, Noah and myself are gonna go to the movies and see The Quiet Ones, that scary movie. Lori hates scary movies, so she's gonna stay home with the pups and just hang out. So uh, let's go see if this scary movie is all that it's supposed to be. You know, I love scary movies, but we're heading into the movies right now, and this is kind of the time where I'm starting to regret my decision. Is this gonna be real scary? I hope. I wanna be scared, but then I'm gonna be scared and be scared. <laughs> no, I don't know. Hopefully this isn't too bad. So just out of the movie, uh, it was absolutely not what I expected. It was, it wasn't bad. No, it was, it was weird. It was just weird. It definitely wasn't scary, really per no. se. I was expecting like a really scary movie. I am too. Uh, it was, it was all right. You know, it's not one that I was blown away by, but uh, but it was pretty cool. So at least I didn't get the crap scared out of me. <laughs> well, although the ice cream didn't work out, hey, I got to spend some time with Noah. Saw a really cool movie, and all in all, it was an absolutely fantastic day. And I hope that you guys have an amazing rest of your day, night, whatever you happen to be watching. Your support means the world to me. Thank you guys so much for watching today can you do me a couple favors before we get out of here can you smash that like button for me please help me get a bunch of likes on this video as well as turn on those post notifications so you know when I upload a video which is every day seven days a week at nine o'clock in the morning Eastern Standard Time remember to be kind to someone today and I promise I will see you guys tomorrow